unlike <laughs> many other people who probably should. It helps him to come with you. We'll see what he thinks. Happy late birthday, Joe. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm gonna see you, but enjoy. Oh, dang hell, see you. Have a good one. Okay. All right. Well, see welcome to St. Gene, everybody. Who's all here? There's a lot fewer people here than we were here last time. Well, what's up with that? Anyways, we've got a Mr. Nathan here to talk about Game Maker. He knows a lot more about it than I do, so I'm going to take it away. Okay. Well, uh, we can get the VGA cable in here somewhere. Okay, but, uh, all right. So... Game Maker is pretty straightforward. I mean, uh, it's already got the entire game loop set up for you, and the scripting language is quite simple. And if you're not good with the scripting language, I mean, there's uh, drag and drop events as well. I would recommend using the scripts, but, you know, you can use the drag and drop as well. Okay. Yeah, it's super long. You guys can make it go through the center, too. I could, okay. but that would be the easy way to do things, and you know how I do this. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be... Uh, nope, not yet. We gotta switch. I think we got to switch inputs. Either that or... Let me just double check, make sure that this thing is, yeah, it's duplicating. We gotta switch over the input. All right. There we go. It's close. All right, so I'm just going to go over all of the uh, basic uh, stuff in Game Maker, and when you're done, it'll it's going to look something like uh, not like that. That's unfortunate. That's the wrong project. All right, your bottom is now caught up. Cut off, but all right, well that's good. So, basic platformer, not really going to do anything with graphics too much, moving platforms, uh, then uh, platforms you can jump through, and simple movement, kind of that stuff. Okay. So, the basic idea for, for Game Maker is that there are rooms that are consistent of objects that have background sounds and sprites, uh, collision meshes, and all of that. So we're going to start with the base resources and work our way towards objects and rooms. So the sprites over here uh, basically are uh, entire sets of, of animations and whatnot. Uh, all the ones I have here are only uh, single, uh, single frame. But you would be able to add additional frames in here, set them all up, and then it would play through all of these animations loop from the first frame to the last frame back to the beginning and over again. Uh, also, in in the uh, the sprites are also the collision masks. So when you specify what uh, an object is able to collide with, what its uh, boundaries are, that's actually in the sprite and not on the object. Uh, and so. The basic idea here is you just go into the collision mask. It's just called a mask for uh, in Game Maker, and it typically does an automatic detection, and so it'll do every non-transparent pixel. Try to make a box that bounds all of those. Calls it good, uh, but you are able to do things like uh, disc, diamond, uh, precise as any non-transparent pixel, or yeah, any uh, opaque pixel, and. Uh, that's pretty much uh, it for collision masks there. Uh, the origin of the sprite is important when you're dealing with the objects and flipping them. Uh, you can flip an object, uh, its image x index, so you can have you know the sprites for all of your characters pointing to the right, and then just flip it to use all of your characters pointing to the left. 
but it flips around the image origin and not around the center of the image. And so the image origin by default is 0, 0. That's going to be this top left corner here. And that's going to cause your object to go from some box that is like this. It's going to get mirrored like this. And you probably are looking when you want to mirror to mirror like that. And so you'll want to set your if you're going to be flipping your objects, you'll probably want to set your origin, your image origin, to the center uh, in whichever direction you're going to be flipping. So in the X direction, you'll want to make sure your X is centered or Y centered. And they basically just have a center button here to, to do it for you. All right. So that's pretty much it for sprites. Uh, we can go into uh, backgrounds are much the same. There's a couple uh, special pieces there for tile sets. Uh, they're not too uh, too difficult. In a background, uh, you go in and draw it up, and then you can set it up as uh, as a tile set if you want to use it for a tile set. And a tile set is basically uh, if you want if you have a lot of detail in your in your game, but a lot of it isn't actually interactable. So you've got grass and roads and whatnot, and they all look different, but it's all just ground. Uh, you can just uh, use tiles instead to draw out what the world looks like and then just use these objects to kind of fill in and say this is what you can collide with and, and that sort of thing. It's a little bit faster if uh, for processing. Uh, paths. Uh, paths can be set up on objects and they determine how an object will move. Uh, basically you set the path to an object and it just follows that. Uh, so you'll set up points across here, and it will take some motion along those. So as you see, I just set up three points, and there will be a starting point, and it'll move to point two, point three, and go back to point one. Uh, you can do, you know, curves and whatnot. Uh, might be useful if you're doing a top-down shooter and all your planes are following some specific path. It'll make it a lot easier to code up just using a path. Will it go around the object if it's in like, if it collides with an object during its path while it's going through its path, will it go around it or will it just... It's going to go straight into that object. It's not going to attempt to, uh, to dodge it. Um, yeah, I know that the professional version of GameMaker has some, uh, some pathfinding functionality. It's, I, oh, what was the algorithms it uses? Um, priority map? Something like that. It's, it's not as good as A star, but it's faster. Uh, scripts. Uh, scripts are basically just straight code that can be applied to any given object. You can just go in and call it from any object. Uh, when you call it, though, it's in the context of that object. So that script is able to manipulate things on that object. Uh, fonts are fonts. You just load them up, and you can use the draw text functions on them. Uh, timelines. Timelines are an interesting piece that allows you to say, this code needs to be executed at this frame of the game. And so you can set up various moments here. Uh, five frames, uh, 25, you know, that sort of thing. And you drop in some action, and that happens at that time. So you can set up uh, a timeline to say, uh, have uh, a cannon wait 30 frames and then shoot, and then wait another 30 frames and aim, wait another 30 frames and shoot, and back and forth between these two things. Uh, Okay. Objects. This is probably where it's going to get a lot more uh, complicated. So in here with the object, you've got a sprite, uh, a parent object, and uh, various other properties. Uh, I guess I'll just go through them. Uh, the sprite here is Simply enough, you just select whatever sprite. And remember that the sprite defines the collision mask. And so the collision mask is based on whichever one you select here. 
It can, however, be overridden by selecting a different sprite in the mask property. Uh, the parent is uh, to grab on uh, to grab the properties of a different object that exists, and this I'll cover that a little bit later. It's used uh, elsewhere. Uh, depth for an object says when uh, when it gets drawn, and so that kind of gives you your Z layering. Uh, any objects that are uh, have a more negative depth get drawn later and so show up above other things. Anything with a really high value shows up underneath. Uh, persistence on an object says whether the object actually carries between rooms. So typically when you move from one room to another, GameMaker will blow away every object you have and start fresh at the next room. Persistence means that that doesn't happen for this object. It just keeps going. Uh, that's uh, pretty much it for that. Uh, the visible property, uh, yeah, its tooltip says whether the object is visible. More specifically, it's whether it actually calls the draw event on the object. Uh, and whether you have a draw event defined or not, there is a default draw event. Uh, solid is a special property that's given to an object used for collisions uh, against solid objects or non-solid objects. All right, so that's the properties of an object, and there are a bunch of uh, other variables on there, but we're going to jump into the events for an object. So an event is something that can happen uh, to an object. It can be created, destroyed, uh, some timer can go off on it. Uh, the step event, I'll explain those a little later. Colliding with some other object. Uh, keyboard events, uh, so any, any button presses and whatnot. Uh, mouse, same thing. Uh, uh, other is various miscellaneous things that can happen, uh, whether the object leaves the room or the intersects the boundary with the room, uh, and then all of the various views. I'll talk about views when we get to rooms. Uh, game start, game end, all, all of these. They're uh, fairly odd, uh, specific ones. And then there's the user-defined events, which you can set up and then call whenever you feel that event needs to be raised. Uh, draw event, that's a special event that occurs once a frame that you need to draw and uh, what your object's representation is. If you don't draw anything but set a draw event, your object will disappear. You won't see it. Uh, let's see, and triggers are in the pro version of GameMaker, so that's... All right. So... What we've got uh, for the various objects, we're going to cover just a simple uh, getting the player to move. So we had that room that was basically the player object in blue, uh, walls and floors green and pink, uh, and the, the jump through platforms in yellow. And so we need to come up with some sort of behavior for these uh, this player uh, to move left, right, jump, uh, it needs to have gravity, and jumping through platform. Uh, it also needs to follow any other moving platforms, left, right, up, down. Uh, so we define all of those, we can define all of those on the player object. Uh, and the other objects uh, as so you see here, the floor object doesn't have anything. The wall object doesn't have anything. The jump through floor doesn't have anything in it. The horizontal platform does, and the vertical platform does. Uh, however, basically what we're using all of that for is just information. We're using it to say, this is a floor, and you know it doesn't move, but it's solid. And this is a wall. It, it doesn't do anything except that it's solid. Uh, the platforms, however, you can jump through, but they're solid as well, and that's, so it's just metadata. 
the player object is where we can say, well, let's act on all of this data. <laughs> so here's simple, straightforward code for uh, for GameMaker. Its scripting language can be, it can look like C, it could look like Visual Basic, it can look like a ton of different languages. Pick one and do that. Don't switch because it'll be awful. It'll execute, but you won't be able to know what's going on. So what we're doing here is we're setting a ton of variables, and they can or cannot exist. They just, if they didn't exist before, they, they do now. Um, and they will exist on that object and persist for the entire object's life. So it's probably best to initialize all of your variables in the create step so you know what variables an object has. And so I've put in here uh, four different ones. And it's uh, whether the object is in the air, it's, uh, it's vertical speed, and we have uh, a delta x and a delta y for movement uh, per frame. So what I've got here are the step events. And what the step events are is an interesting uh, uh, set of events where the begin step is at the very beginning of the, uh, of the entire frame, the entire rendering frame. Every object gets a begin step event, and you can execute code on it. And then collisions are processed, and uh, uh, keyboard events, and mouse events, and all of that. And then your step event is processed, and then things are drawn, and then the end step occurs. So the begin step, step, and end step are uh, allow you to specify when your code is going to get executed. Uh, so for instance, in the begin step, I just use it to set all of the variables that are going to be are initialized at the very beginning of the frame will be modified sometime at the begin or at the uh, step event, and then get used in the end step event. Uh, so yeah, begin step just initialized them, and end step uh, uses them. Uh, so let's see. That would be a good way to start this. Uh, let's go with gravity. So gravity is something that's just going to take the object and continually pull it in the downward direction, or whichever direction you wish gravity to be. In this case, it is down. Uh, so GameMaker does provide uh, built-in functionality for this. There is a gravity and a gravity direction variable. However, I'm trying, let's see, I believe it's called gravity. You'll see any of them that are uh, built in will be highlighted. Uh, and then gravity direction. Uh, you can set these. So uh, uh, gravity is going to be a uh, scalar value, which is going to be how many pixels the object, uh, the object's velocity is modified. And direction is done, ooh, I want to say this was the, GameMaker was weird about directions. Because uh, basically it has the xy, the xy plane, however this is positive and that's negative, but when it does direction, uh, its direction is the typical mathematical one. So 0 is here, 90, yeah, so on. So any of your math, if you're trying to calculate angles, it's all going to be wrong because your y value needs to get inverted. That's another caveat. Uh, so if you wanted to use the gravity system, we know it's, uh, if it's going to be down, it's going to be in 270. So we can set gravity to two se uh, gravity direction to 270, set the gravity value to something, and it's going to, to move the object down every frame. However, it's 
difficult to work with that because gravity is always going to act on that object, whether you would want it to or not. For instance, if the player is actually on solid ground, gravity is still going to, at the end of the frame, try to add velocity downwards, and your object is going to move. And so it's going to fall into the floor, and then you're going to have to correct that next frame. But your object will have been drawn into the floor, and so it's, it's a fairly painful process. Uh, there's a lot of other built-in variables that are there, and if you don't, if you're not careful, uh, it's going to bite you. There's a horizontal speed, there's a vertical speed, there's speed in general, uh, there's direction in general, uh, and all of these are both properties that you can read and properties you can write. So if you're not careful, it, it will bite you. Uh, all right, so the basic idea is this uh, place meeting. Uh, that is a function that determines whether the floor or the uh, a solid object is at that location. So it takes your current object, moves it to some location, and then does collision detection and says, is it hitting this specific object? So the simple way to do that is say, hey, is it hitting floor? Uh, luckily, with, uh, with uh, parent objects and inheritance, I've set the wall. Uh, the wall's parent is the floor, and the jump floor, its parent, is also the floor. So we luck out there in that we only have to do a check for floor, and it checks all of these objects. And then we can specialize the behavior based on the specific types uh, later. Uh, let's see. I'm not quite sure what else covering here uh, would be good. Um, because I could go through a lot of these these functions, but it's probably going to be incredibly boring for me to go through all of this. I guess, are there any specific questions about, um, about GameMaker that you would like answered? Um, <coughs> It can be anything. Floor is open. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I have a question. So you said that if you don't specify something, your object will go through the floor? Uh, if you specify the gravity. Uh, so I guess I can uh, elaborate a little bit more on that. Uh, so the gravity, uh, the gravity variable on an object and gravity direction variable on the object specify that every single... Uh, Every single frame. Uh, let's see. This there might be a. All right. Good enough. Yeah, that'll probably be fine. Okay. So your object has a bunch of. Uh, it has h speed, uh, v speed, and then also it has a speed and a direction. These all play into each other. So if you set the, the H speed, increase it, it's going to change the direction and speed variables. If you change the speed, it's going to change H speed and V speed, and basically all of these will change the other ones. Gravity and gravity direction, it's gravity direction, but I'm lazy. Uh, both of these, what they will do is they will affect these variables at the end of the frame. So at the end of the frame, rather, yeah, it will actually change the direction. Essentially, it does a motion add operation. 
and this is also a function in Game Maker. Motion add, and then you add a certain motion. This will be gravity and the gravity direction. All right. It's going to do this automatically every single frame if you have these set. And so at the very end of the frame, after your player, so you got the floor, you've got your player object, which I'm just going to draw as a block, because that's its collision mask, and it's sitting on the ground here. Well, what it's going to do is it's going to set your vertical speed. So let's say you wanted to stop. So you set its vertical speed to zero and said, we're good. Well, Game Maker's going to go, well, I'm going to motion add, and then add some motion to you, and you're going to start moving down again. And next frame, you've got a problem, because you're going to go right through the floor. Uh, so that is what I'm saying when you have to be careful with the built-in ones, because they're going to change your, your object's state. Uh, so you really need to know what those ones are doing. Uh, the way I did it instead uh, is that at the for an object, I set the uh, a delta x and a delta y value, and I will modify these two variables. I set them to zero at the beginning of a frame. I modify these to say this is where I'm going to move, and then at the very end of the frame, I apply this. And so any motion and all of that is held in other variables besides h speed and v speed. I use other ones to uh, other custom variables that I just store the values in and can apply when necessary instead of arbitrarily always applying these these uh, numbers. So it sounds like you're just using your own variables instead of game makers because, well, game makers kind of... You, you can't set conditions on game makers and that's really the problem. So you have to continually set these to go, well, no, now the gravity needs to be zero because I'm on the ground. You know, and then you start jumping. It's like, okay, well, now gravity actually needs to take place, so I need to reset the gravity variable. It's it's kind of it's kind of wonky when instead you could just say, you know, if in air, you know, apply gravity. I mean, that seems to make a lot more sense than sitting here and changing one variable due to certain events. Is there uh, any other questions? Anybody want me to just run through all of the various functionality uh, function calls in GameMaker? Uh, uh, that's probably one thing I, I should point out, well, is that GameMaker has a really, really good uh, help system, um, a really good manual. So. If you go to the help contents, uh, it's got an entire uh, CHM, I think is what it's called, uh, of pretty much everything in Game Maker. And so this, uh, if you're looking at trying to figure out how the Game Maker language works, I would highly recommend going and looking at this uh, because it will go through and say, uh, you know, game graphics. I want to go in here and say, okay, well, how do I draw sprites and backgrounds? And it will go through and say, here's a function, these are the parameters, and this is what it does, down through every single one. So it's it's very, very helpful. Well, I, I, one important thing for making any game is collision detection. Well, I know that you could just say, well, here's the documentation, read it, but... Okay. Would it be possible to talk about collision detection a little bit? Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, collision detection. Uh, GameMaker does have a lot of uh, built-in uh, collision detection there for you. Uh, you can do an event and say when you collide with uh, some type of object. And this will also... Uh, inheritance does apply here. So if you say collide with object floor, it will also mean collide with wall and jump floor and platforms and, and whatnot. Um, it will apply a given event, whatever code you put over here. So if you drop in uh, some random event and say, when you collide, move towards something. And so that's what'll happen. If I collide with the floor, it'll move towards point zero zero. That's 
Uh, there's also a bunch of other functions that you can use instead of uh, reacting to collisions, you can preempt them, which as you see, I don't have any, uh, there's no collision events here that I'm responding to. Instead, all of the movement, uh, for instance, in the end step, I'm using uh, functions to say, <coughs> you know, am I on a moving platform? Well, the way to figure that out is to find out if beneath me I collide with something. If I were one pixel down, or uh, I think I have a V-tolerance 8. If I'm 8 pixels down from uh, from that, then I'm colliding with, uh, then I'm on a platform. Now, let's see if I've got, there we go. Okay, place free. So, that's preempting collision. So, what I'm doing is saying, I want to move horizontally by this amount. Well, I want to find out if that spot is actually free of any objects. Uh, place free checks specifically for solid objects. Uh, so it's not checking for specific objects, just uh, just that. So if it's completely free, then just you know move. Uh, else, we can do other things like place meeting, and so that'll that'll say uh, it allows you to check collision with a specific object in all of its child objects. Uh, so the object jump floor, uh, so if in this case it's saying if the object we're going to collide with is a jump floor, it's okay, just keep moving. Uh, move contact solid. That is a function that says, hey, I want you to move in this direction until you collide with something, or you meet, uh, reach the maximum distance that we're allowing you to move. So move contact solid. In this case, uh, what I'm doing here is saying place free. If there is an object that is in my way, uh, then if I'm moving to the right, then move to the right until you hit a solid object. But if I'm moving to the left, move to the left until you hit a solid object. So, and basically the same thing happens again with vertical movement. So, there's two different ways that you can work with collisions. There's reacting to them, and then there's preempting them, and GameMaker supports both. Uh, what if we wanted to do things like changing the size of an object? Is that easy to do? Like, not necessarily in one dimension, but or in both dimensions, but just squishing it. Okay. Um, and I know that these are probably pretty basic things that I could easily find by looking up in the yep. documentation. Uh, but... Let's see. Okay. So there are built-in variables, and I believe there's global. Okay, there we are, local. There. Now, it's probably stupidly hard to read that, but here's the list of all uh, local variables. So these are variables that are on every object. And what you would be looking for is the image x scale. The image x scale is uh, going to be its x scale factor. So if you want to make the sprite uh, two times wider, you would just set the image x scale to two, and it'd be twice as wide. If you want to flip the sprite, you can use a negative number. So if you want to flip it to be, uh, you know, you have a right-facing sprite and you want it to face left, you can use negative one as its X scale, and it'll flip along the image's origin point. Uh, same thing with uh, the image Y scale. It is there as well, and it will just do the exact same thing, but on the Y. Uh, And then how did you pull up this list? Uh, that was in, if I recall correctly, I just went through here and looked around until I found show built-in variables, scripts. Uh, scripts show built-in variables. Uh, there is a list of all of the functions. Uh, that's probably more painful. Um, you probably just want to go look through the manual because it's more categorized by what you're looking for. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes it might just be nice to just be able to get a nice list of just everything too as a starting point for looking through the reference. I mean, if you kind of know what you're looking for, 
like the gravity one, you can start typing and then then pause, and it'll pick up on it, and it'll do some really basic uh, checks and provide suggestions. So it's got like a bad IntelliSense in it? Yeah, it's got a kind of a really crappy IntelliSense. So if you have like a bunch of bullets going and moving and that each of them moves in like one step, um, and you want to like detect collisions between them and each other and maybe some character, do you have to like maintain a list of everything you create to check against that? Uh, no. Uh, that might be best handled reactionary, uh, in a reactionary way instead of a, a preemptive way. Uh, because GameMaker really doesn't have a good way to, to do, um, lists. They're kind of a, a pain to do. Uh, you have to have the pro version to have access to a lot of data structures like the stack, the list, the queue. Um, and you can't really build them with the script, uh, the scripting language. Uh, so some of the collisions will be like, okay, with an object of this type, and you won't know which one it is. Uh, so if you do reactionary, what you've got uh, in a collision event, let's say with the floor, I'll pull a script in. There's a special type, there's self, if I can type. There's self, which means uh, the current object. But in collisions, there's also other, and that means the other object I'm colliding with. Uh, so in collisions, there's, specific, there's that specific keyword other. So if a bullet, you could say a bullet collides with player, so in the bullets, uh, event, you can say, uh, if I collide with player, then other dot health reduce health. You could do it the other way and say the health, uh, or when, when the player collides with a bullet, reduce the, the player's health. E either way works, um, it's just that whichever way makes more sense, just do it that way. More sense to you, I suppose. Uh, but there are times when you're going to have to do effects on both objects, and it might be best to keep the event happening in only one of them and not both of them. So when you have things like a collision event, um, whatever is handling that does know about what it's hitting. Uh, yes, through the other keyword. That is... That's very useful. Yeah, you'll, you'll know that it's an instance or some sub-instance of whatever that collision event was on, and then you have the other op the other keyword to reference it um, or to modify any of its variables. Can you have uh, more than one collision? For example, if this thing or subtypes collide, and then separately, or if this other thing collides? Uh, yeah. <laughs> when you have... Um, when you do collisions, you can set up as many of these, you know, as you you pretty much want here. Uh, and each one, you just can write up a different script for each one. And so, if you're colliding with a wall and a platform, it will do each one. And so, I assume that that applies to basically any other event as well. Uh, well for for uh, collisions, yes. For other ones, uh, I mean, for key presses, of course, whatever keys you're pressing, all of them will execute. What order they execute in, that's that's kind of up in the air because they're button presses. It's probably it's most likely going to be in the order they're pressed in, but I don't know game makers internals to be able to say that. Are there any other questions on GameMaker specifically? Um, as far as collisions go, assuming you don't have an intuitive like wall behind the player, you know, I ran that, I wind up making a wall behind the player, but how do you prevent uh, like uh, bullets 
lagging your system without a collision to intuitively hit, assuming okay. you have infinite space behind you. Uh, so there's a good event um, for an object. It's in the other group, and it's outside room uh, that you can use. Or, or view, I suppose. I really didn't cover views. I'll, I'll get to those after this. Uh, so you can use outside room. And so what that does is it's an event that will be called once the object leaves the boundary of that room. So objects can exist in a room outside of its visible space and then come in or start inside and leave. And so for the case of bullets, if you're doing like a whatever, top-down shooter or bullet hell, whatever it be, uh, when the bullet, you can have an event on it uh, outside room that will get called once it leaves the room's uh, boundary. Okay. And you could say outside room, you go in here, uh, I think it's under main one, and you can just do destroy self, done. And so it'll clean up all of the bullets that leave the room for you. A very simple so way to keep can, it from... Can you specify on which, like... Like everything behind you, uh, with the exception of <coughs> things in front of you? Uh, you would probably want to do with an outside room, uh, you could do a check to see if it's beneath the player or beneath the room. Uh, uh, let's see, there's probably a better way to draw this up. Alright, so what you're saying is. Uh, Say we've got some room. Yeah, this will work. So we've got some room like this. And we've got a player here. And you only want bullets. You know, this bullet you want gone, but this bullet you want to keep. Okay. Yeah. So what you could do is set an outside room event for the bullet. And then inside of it, you check its Y value to see if its Y value is below the room's Y value, if it's greater, I suppose, because this would be zero and this would be, let's say it's a thousand. So you'd just check this bullet's Y value if it's greater than a thousand and it's outside of the room, then destroy it. So are, um, is the game like guaranteed to run at a constant frame per second? Uh, the uh, guaranteed no. Uh, that's all dependent on the uh, the machine it's running on. It's going to do its best to try to run at that frames per second. However, its drawing and its logic are lockstep. Okay. So, like, say you wanted to like do a game where you had to synchronize the the video and then the sound, like a Guitar Hero game. No, I think you have some experience with that, huh? Yeah, uh, good luck. That's that's basically what I can say. Um, if uh, in the room itself, you can set uh, the room speed, and that's in frames per second. Default is thirty. Uh, yeah, and so it's going to attempt to run at thirty frames per second, unless your machine can't handle it. It's not a, a delta. Uh, delta T, uh, time-based, where it says, oh, well, it's been five seconds since the last time we've actually run any logic. We should run all of the logic and tell them, hey, it's been five seconds. Do whatever you're supposed to have done in five seconds. It, it's, it's more, it's, it's your frame go, and then it doesn't matter how long it's been since the last frame. Uh, so if the machine can handle 30 frames per second, it will run fine at 30 frames per second, but if it can't, the whole game is just going to run slower. That was one of the big issues I had with uh, with that. Um, it was shown here, the uh, stealth game that I had. Yeah, it was one of the big issues I had, is that it ran fine on my machine because it was a, a an i5. But on anybody else's machine, it was it was kind of a big deal. It didn't work very well. So is there no way around this timing issue? Like, there's no way possible to get, like, a delta T? I really don't think there would be. Uh, there might be a way to get game, to pull uh, some sort of game ticks, but I don't, I don't know if that functionality exists in Game Maker. 
you might be able to pull it off using an extension to mm -hmm. Game Maker, and it does provide those. Yeah, I saw something in the uh, the big old list about uh, in the big old documentation list uh, adding DLLs to the game. I expect that that's probably not something you're going to get in the free version, though. Nope, that is in the pro version only. Um, and there's a lot of cool stuff. Some people have uh, taken Box 2D, so the 2D physics stuff, and made that compatible with Game Maker. Uh, yeah, it's it's some pretty cool stuff, but you have to have the pro version for it to work. Um, but specifically for the audio video synchronization, if you set up your audio events to happen on a timeline, then you can guarantee that you're, like, so you, instead of having an audio file you play, you have the various instrument pieces that will be played in a timeline. That will synchronize it, and the sound will just play slower when the game is slower. The sound plays slower. Well, how does it accomplish that? Is it just, like... Uh, it, well, the 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 audio the audio the audio file itself will play at the normal speed. Mm -hmm. However, the the spacing between each audio file being played is going to stretch as it slows down, and so the song will play at normal like each instrument sample will play normally, but they'll all be further apart in time. Mm -hmm. But it would keep it synchronized. Yeah, I mean, if and if it's going to be a rhythm game that just has like a beat or something, you might be able to do it that way. But if it's like a an entire song, it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult to do uh, instrument sample by instrument sample. So you said there's something called views. Yes, views. Um, let me get this back down. So views are basically uh, a piece of a room. Interesting. Okay. All right. So, in rooms there are uh, views. And so, this game isn't using a view. But what a view is, I'm just going to do a real quick one and say this one's uh, set a width and a height, 320, I don't know, 240. Uh, I'll drop it down a little bit. Um, okay, there. And I'll make it follow this player. There, good enough. All right. So what a view is... It's basically a smaller portion of the room that's visible. And I can't see anything, so I just fall out. But uh, basically, you can have mo uh, multiple views of a given room on your display. Uh, so that's what the view in room, you can see drawn on there. That's the view. And I said, you know, follow this player with a horizontal border of 32 pixels on every side. Um, the horizontal speed says how quickly the view is going to move to try to keep up with this object. Negative one means just keep it in view. Um, port on screen, however, is... Let's, let's do something dumb. Uh, There. So port on screen all of a sudden changes how it's going to be drawn there. So it's physical size on the screen. Uh, so these are probably fairly uh, useful for things like uh, I think there was a zombie game last year that used, yeah. Who? Oh, was that in Game Maker? I thought that was something else. That was that was Game Maker. Game Maker Studio has a a little bit more than Game Maker Eight One. 
I, I'm only covering here 8-1. Yeah. yeah. I wish we still had those games. I don't know what happened to those ones from last year. Really? Yeah, they never got uploaded to any central location because, well, SharePoint wasn't working. Surprise. Uh, <laughs> you guys sleeping over there. Uh, well, whatever. Okay. Uh, let's see. If you're going to use views, though, the object following behavior is pretty crappy. Uh, there is built-in functionality to move views, uh, and so you can try to use that instead to follow an object, to lead an object, or something like that. Is there um, a way, did you talk about how you can make characters move by frame? Move? I, I know there was a intuitive way to like uh, show animation for a, like a, like the a guy jumping, but I, I know the way Game Waker works, it just loops it over and over again. Oh, yeah. Um, so inside of uh, an object's built-in variables, there is... A f where are we? Uh, I think we have got image index. And so image index is the index in the current sprite of which image to, to show. And there, then there is image speed. And image speed basically says, how quickly do you flip through all of these? Uh, okay. So with, uh, with, oh, that's a good way to put this. Uh, so you just reference an index? You can reference index uh, indices, or if you want, you can do a check per per frame on the current image index and what uh, image you're displaying. So if you jump, you know that your image index needs to be 17 through 20 if you're heading up. And so you start at 17, you set your image uh, image speed to uh, to 1. So it'll just every frame it'll go to the next the next uh, sprite in the sequence. And then you say, well, if it's over 20, then bring it back to 20 and set the image speed to 0. And then it won't change from that one. And then when conditions switch to say you're moving down, you can go, okay, well, that's actually frames 24 through 27. And so you can switch to that. Uh, so you can manipulate the image speed and image index uh, variables. If you'd like, you can do it all using the image index variable. Or I think there's image single, but I've not worked with that. So I'm not... Not quite sure. I would assume setting that will set the image index and then set the speed to zero, but not sure. So what exactly are tiles? Are those those like individual squares on the screen, basically? Uh, yeah, so a tile... Let's see if I can just draw some garbage here. Okay, so there's a tile or a background, rather. I can say, I want to use that as a tile set. The tile width and height is 16 pixels. And then go jump to a room, go to the, go to the, not backgrounds, the tiles. And you'll see that you have all of your backgrounds that are viable tile sets. And you can sit here and select which tile you want. And then you can go and paint them on the, on there. And so when you start this up, they'll be there but not actually, they're not interactable or, or anything like that. They're just, they're just there. They don't have to be just the background. They can be your foreground and anything, anything in between. It's just visual. That's it. Okay, and there's no limitation on how big you can make the map, is there? Big you can make a given room? Um, within reason. I, I, bigger than most monitors, then... Well, if you use views, it'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, so is that the only way you can actually ever interact with it? Or can you set it so tiles? Can, yeah. Um, oh, boy. Okay. 
Um, I don't recall if there's a way to actually add and delete tiles from... There might be. Uh, I would typically try to stay away from... Okay, there we go. Tile add, delete, delete at, exists, find. If something's going to change in the game, it's probably best to make that an object instead of a tile. I was like thinking like background and foreground, you may want to interact with that. Yeah, I mean if it's an if it's something that you're actually going to interact with, you could just make it an object with a sprite instead. I mean yeah, there was probably a lot more like back in uh, Super Nintendo era where they dealt a lot with tile sets and manipulating those. But I'd say at this point, computers are good enough that you could just deal with a large sprite that you're drawing instead of a bunch of individual small tiles. Now, um, are there, is there anything common that you can think of off the top of your head that Game Maker just makes it difficult to do and it would be fine in any other like language that you have to get a little kludgy with? Okay. Uh, anytime you have to deal with a data structure, because you can't. Uh, the only thing you get is, is an array, and the array, if I recall correctly, is of fixed size, and you can't actually get the size of the array. You just kind of have to know. It's something like that. It, it's 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 pretty difficult to work with. If you've got the pro version of of Game Maker, you've got a stack, a queue a list, uh, and a few other data structures that you can work with, and those are a little bit better. Well, uh, are there any other questions? All right, well, um, looks like it's about 5 o'clock, so we're probably going to have to wrap up here. Uh, so come in and give him a talk there, Nathan. Yeah. Do you work for Game Maker? What do you do? Oh, I work for Microsoft. He, yeah, that's still in from us by Microsoft. You just know a lot about Game Maker. Do you used to use it or still do? Uh, yeah. Every, uh, you know, the, were you here last week? Uh, I mean, maybe. Uh, not. okay. Well, last week's, like for uh, this? For, yeah, for this. Yeah. Uh, the stealth theme, the one with the, that was the one that I had made. Okay. And the one from last year was uh, was this guy. Oh, cool. whoops! All right. And it, this one, and it's kind of off a little bit, but that's okay. So, what is going on? It's basically spinning around in. Spinning okay. around in circles. There's a lot of uh, yeah. So basically, that was a lot of view manipulation, and that's pretty cool. That one. Yeah, I've never seen something like that. Yeah. So there's there's quite a bit that you can get done with with Game Maker. It's just how how much are you willing to play around with all of the, the functionality it provides to do interesting things. With this, you were, were using uh, Pro version or just a basic? This was Pro version because I needed uh, I needed more efficient primitive rendering. And so uh, Game Maker provides the ability to draw triangles. Uh, so here, I'll just draw triangles and sets of three points. So you'd have to go, you know, these three points draw a triangle, these three points draw a triangle. But Game Maker Pro provides the ability to say, here are a bunch of points. What I want you to do is to draw triangles through this entire piece, like this. Uh, and this is going to be way more efficient because what it's what you're, it's actually doing is passing it directly to OpenGL to say, you know. Render this exactly as it is. Yeah, instead of sitting here and bouncing to OpenGL every single time. Yeah. And so I needed the more efficient rendering. What do you use the triangles for? Uh, you know, uh, actually, all of the rendering, right. all of the rendering, rendering in that game was done using using primitives. Uh, so all of the circles were basically just a triangle uh, fan. Yep, yep. Uh, all of the arcs 
were actually just sets of points with triangles drawn. So that was is it something you have to kind of do with uh, a maker? Is, there's no circles or there are circles uh, and, and various things like that. A half moon is that what it was? Yeah, for arc. Yeah, for arcs and things, it does not have that that functionality. Sure. You can draw lines, circles, uh, triangles are done with points, but if you want to start drawing some really uh, odd-looking geometry, you're pretty much stuck using the triangle by triangle primitives. I remember you were doing you some interesting math to try and get arcs with triangles. Uh, yeah, basically what it was, um, it was at a center point. I wanted it to be defined as uh, some point is the near, the near point and the far point, and then basically I have some some angle. I don't mean to interrupt you, but before everybody leaves, I, I, I have to announce quick. Okay, so I know before I did say that we would be following a schedule of um, like discussion, tutorial, competition. Competition's not going to be happening this upcoming weekend because I'm going to a competition called Necmania and I will be in Illinois, so that's not going to happen. But we could have just like the regu another regular discussion day. And I'll pull up some good juicy stuff for us to look at. And mm. that literally, it will be juicy. So yeah, our meeting time next week will be at this time. Or four to five. Yeah. yeah, we are. Yeah. We're not going to meet today. Ah, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, postpone it next time. Okay. I didn't tell you that before I announced it to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what is it? How did we get? Uh, so, yeah, uh, what I wanted to do was to draw an arc. You have here at your central point that the arc is going to be based off of some angle in a near and far point. And so, what it's doing is it goes and calculates all of the points in, in the arc to be able to draw a. Uh, to draw a believable enough arc. I'll see you oh, I'm sorry, here we are. So, are you here? Black is a little easier to see.